Here we are, episode five already. Really didn't think we would get this far, but today I'm joined by a super guest that I'm sure lots of you guys are gonna recognize. You've probably seen her on YouTube. She's all over the place. She's killing it with her videos. Um, I'm joined today by Megan Lewis. Hey, Megan. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely, not at all. It's great to have a little bit of your time. Um, and I feel like for those people, the, the few that live under a rock that don't know who you are yet, um, do you want to just give us a little bit of a background to who you are, how you came to even be in Sweden in the first place? Why are you here? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I'm here and then I don't have an answer. <laughs> I feel <laughs> my answer is that, uh, okay, so I'm, I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I first visited Sweden in 2012. I was actually studying abroad in Italy at the time, and I'd always wanted to visit Sweden, Finally, like while I was studying abroad, I, I took a like a one week trip uh, during our fall break, decided to go to Stockholm and it was just an immediate like, oh my gosh, this is where I belong. It was a gut feeling and I've never felt anything like it. Like Stockholm was the first time I was living around Swedish people and hearing Swedish all the time. And then uh, after that, the next experience would have probably been The Bachelor because that's when I was also just completely surrounded by... <laughs> Swedish people all the time too. Yeah, of course. And I mean, we've got to get into that because I mean, I didn't know, I didn't know until I found your Instagram and your YouTube channel that you've been on The Bachelor. How did that even, how did that come to be? What's the story there? It's a crazy story. Uh, so this was two years ago. I think two years ago right now, I think I flew to, we filmed in South Africa, which was amazing. Yeah. And we flew out like August or April 26th or something, 2019. Yeah. But no, what happened was I had actually, um, I applied for a totally different show. <laughs> <laughs> There's a show called Alt Fisferia, which is where they literally take Americans with Swedish heritage and then they fly them to Sweden and then they try Swedish cultural stuff and then they find old distant relatives that they've never met before. And I was like, heck yeah, I <laughs> sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking like, I mean, sure, I'd love to go to Sweden and everything like that. So I applied for that show and I, I had an interview. I got like some replies being like, yeah, like let's, you know, they wanted to talk and it went really well. Like they really, really liked me. And so I was going through the audition process and then, then they called me and they're like, like, Megan, we just, we were going through your application and we don't know how we missed this, but you've lived in Sweden before. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> they're like, and so they're like, you're overqualified for the show. <laughs> they're like, you know a lot about Sweden. I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> that's why I wanted to go on the show. <laughs> exactly. Like, we, yeah, no, they want Americans who don't know anything about Sweden because then they can like, try all these things for the first time okay. and so I was just like what if it always what if every time feels like the first time like I love I love just Sweden, so just, yeah like like I promise you I'll be just as excited to try whatever it is <laughs> for the fourth time <laughs> yeah it's like we don't need to know how many times I've done this. Like, yeah. but yeah, so they said I was overqualified. And of oh. course I was just like so bummed out. And so I threw out there just kind of as kind of as a joke, but like I was like, well, is there like any other show I could be on? Like maybe. And at the time, I think literally the American Bachelor, that was on TV at the time. And so, of course, I was totally invested in that show. And so I threw it out there. It's like, is there like a Swedish Bachelor or something? And she was, the lady I was on the phone with was like, well, actually, <laughs> we're, we're casting for The Bachelor right now. I'm like, and I didn't even know they had a Swedish Bachelor. I was like, what? So she was like... I think you might be a good fit, actually. And I know the girl who does the casting and I'll pass your name along. And so so that happens like that whole conversation happens. And I was like, OK, that's crazy. But who knows? Two months later, 
<laughs> I got a phone call. Like, so like nothing happened after that. I was like, okay, you know, I didn't, I didn't expect anything. And then I got a phone call two months later. And, uh, I remember I was still in bed. It was like, maybe it was a little bit too late. It was, it was probably like 10 o'clock. I should have been awake at this point, but <laughs> wait, no, I worked to be fair. I worked overnight shifts at a casino. So I was allowed to sleep in at that time. <laughs> it was <acceptable. laughs> I had an ex- Yeah. I had an excuse, but, uh, yeah, like I wake up and I see a, f- Oh, Oh my gosh. Sorry. I'm remembering all the details now. I had applied to universities. This is all this is all that same year. Right. So, I had applied to Swedish universities and then suddenly I wake up to my phone ringing and it's from a Swedish number. So, I'm thinking this has to do with my university application because I was going to find out that week if I got in or not. And so I was like, okay, I was like like in bed so I'm like, "Hello." <laughs> They're just like like, hi, uh, is this Megan? Like, I'm one of the producers from The Bachelor. And I just, like, I sat up, like, so fast. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? And so they're like, yeah, I got your name passed along to me. And I was wondering if you want to do, like, an audition for The Swedish what? Bachelor. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, okay. <laughs> Sure. This was actually my first insight into customer service in Sweden, which I've complained about before. <laughs> but like, I I kept asking them for like, do you have an update? Like when, because they said like, yeah, if you get onto the show, we would fly out end of April. And it started to get to the point where I'm like, okay, it's beginning of April. It's mid-April. Like, and then 10 days before they're like, We want to cast you for the show. And I'm like, yeah, but you leave in 10 days. I'm like, what? Uh, So I had to tell my job. I had to pack. I had to figure out. And the thing with The Bachelor is you don't know how long you're going to be on the show. So like you could be there. Yeah, you could be there for one week. You could be there for two months. So you don't know what to pack. And so uh, that was so stressful. And then I didn't actually get my plane ticket until like the day before. So I kept thinking like, it's not good. It's not going to happen. I kept thinking like they're going to they're going to cancel on me or something. And so, yeah, the day before I got a plane ticket, I'm like, OK. But then it wasn't until I finally made it through customs that and like I was on the other side of the air, like that's in the airport. And I was like, it's real. This is happening. And then it took then it took over 30 hours to, or it took like how many hours to get there? Like 36 hours to get there. That's I had mental. to go to South Africa. Yeah, it was crazy. So, uh, yeah, so that was that's the story of like how I got on the show. And then being on the show is just, it was both amazing and incredibly emotionally exhausting, which I was prepared for, but okay. it still was. I mean, like, yeah, it's just, it's a reality show. And like, of course, you're only seeing small parts of it. But like behind the scenes, it's a lot of just waiting. And mm-hmm. I got really, yeah, it got really frustrating sometimes just sitting around day after day with nothing to do. Like that was yeah. what I struggled with was like, you know, like, yes, it was beautiful. No complaints there. I had like an amazing view and I lived in like a villa with a bunch of girls. That part was wonderful, but like I didn't speak Swedish fluently, so it was really tough to it was tough to make friends, you know, on the show with like I did make friends, but it was only in English and I don't know, I did always feel a little left out when I was on the show. Uh, but I mean, overall, I it was amazing and oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's been a crazy experience because I was on that show before moving here. I moved here, so I was on the show then it didn't air until September 2019. So I moved here August 9, 2019. So for a month after moving here, like I was making all of my new international friends. I'm a new student at the university. And like I have this secret that nobody knows that I wasn't allowed to tell anyone, you know. So for a month, I'm just like, I'm a new student. Like, <laughs> what's up, guys? I'm from the States. Yeah, don't worry about me, guys. And then all of a sudden, it's like, also, I'm on a reality show and it airs next week. So 
<laughs> so yeah, that was really cool. Really, really fun. Oh my gosh. And then, um, and then as you say, obviously then fast forward a little bit and you arrive in Sweden, it's, you know, this secret that you're keeping. Nobody knows that you're about to be on one of, you know, one of the biggest shows in the country. And then, and then you, you know, you, you blast onto the screen. Everybody knows who you are. What's that experience like? You must have suddenly got, you know, lots of people start writing to you or, you know, reaching out on socials and stuff. I will, you know, that's a really good example of what's so different between the States and Sweden is that like, I, I, was, I was definitely getting messages, but it was still just nothing compared to what I think people in the States would experience. Like, okay. you know, The Bachelor in the States is huge. And like, if you're on The Bachelor in the US, you're like guaranteed 100,000 followers in like the first <laughs> month or something, you know? And so I guess I knew it wouldn't be that crazy here, but I was still, I was actually surprised that it was a lot more low key than what I was expecting. And I'm fine with that, but it was a surprise to me that I was getting messages and I was getting followers, but it wasn't like this huge blast of like, I don't know, like attention, I guess. So you went from, you know, this, this, this TV star who, who was getting all these Instagram followers and then suddenly you jumped over to YouTube and did something totally, totally separate. What's the story there? Thank you for checking out this video. You have just seen a preview of this week's Just a Brit Abroad podcast. It's a long form feature length podcast show that I release right here on this channel once every two weeks on the topics of tourism, travel, culture, and lifestyle. If you like what you just saw, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're subscribed and you've got that bell on so that you're notified as soon as the episode comes out this Saturday. We'd love to have you along for the journey. But as I say, thank you for checking this out and I'll see you then. Bye guys.